So when you sit down with your popcorn to enjoy a film, I want you to remember that all movies carry a message, whether intentionally or not. And sometimes that is super messed up. For instance, yay, I overcame my struggle and now I can conscript millions of citizens and send them to their death in World War II. Yay, we won the court case. Now this nine-year-old girl can become her disabled father's sole carer. Hey, ignore the noncing. This guy is a national hero. Hey, ignore the noncing. This guy is a civil rights hero. Hey, look, forget about the noncing. This guy's a genius. Hollywood, I'm kind of noticing a disturbing trend here. What, what's up with that? What's going on? And in the case of Fear Street, well, we're gonna get to that. Look, I, I want to lay this out straight away. I really liked the Fear Street trilogy. I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was creative. It had a sort of epic horror feel and it, it also had a sort of post scream paradigm breaking feel to it that really impressed me. I would love to see more of that stuff. But morally, it is messed up. It's seriously messed up. Now, I'm going to need massive spoilers to uh, tell you why. So this is your massive spoiler warning. Um, that That's it. Massive spoilers for the Fear Street trilogy ahead. Now, let's get into the weirdness. Yeah? The messed up ethics of Fear Street starts with Dina and Sam's relationship. And this is something I noticed on my first watch while I was mid film. This really stood out to me. Now, while she does get redeemed later in Fear Street 1994, Sam is consistently portrayed as the bad guy in their relationship. Hello, don't forget the most important part, Sam. Yeah. Sam herself even accepts the blame and ends up apologizing to Dina and accepting Dina's fatalism. Maybe you're right. Maybe shit is doomed. So why is Sam the bad guy here? Let's just lay out Sam's list of offenses, okay? So there is her parents divorced, which Dina is kind enough to attack her for. Um, her parents moved her 30 minutes away into Sunnyvale, which I I'm not sure that's a decision a 17 year old would have a big say in. There's also that she isn't fully out in high school in 1994. Film, what the hell? Film, you chose to set this in 1994. Don't bring 2021 expectations into it. Sam is also guilty of being bisexual. Yeah, fair play to be honest. And Sam also believes that she can improve herself with effort. Big no-no, big no-no. Yeah, the Fear Street really hates when people do that. We're, we're gonna go back to that one. My parents got divorced. I didn't have a choice. Oh, come on. You just couldn't wait to start your new fake life with your fake ass mom. Now, just for the sake of balance, uh, Dina, on the other hand, uh, her role in this includes Dumping Sam. No, you broke up with me, remember? So stop acting like I'm the bad guy. Uh, being very jealous of who Sam is seeing after she has dumped her. Uh, some people might call that possessive and twisted. Oh, and there's also nearly killing Sam. There, there's that too. That That's quite pivotal. And as a bonus, lying to the police about nearly killing Sam. The driver said that right before the crash, someone opened the emergency exit. I don't remember that. No. He also saw you with the cooler. Did anyone else see that? Are you okay? Stay away from her, bald like freak. Now we need to just pause here, because at this point, Fear Street is using homophobic abuse from another character to get your sympathies back onto Dina. It's a ruse, you're being manipulated. Do not fall for it. At this point in the film, Dina has still been absolutely abhorrent. Don't be tricked. And as an aside, Dina also hangs around some really bad people. Uh, yes, for instance, Kate, 
who here suggests fleeing the scene after flirting with manslaughter. Uh, not a good person, as we will cover later. Help me carry her. Hey, we need to leave, like 10 minutes ago? Now Sam's mum is also portrayed as awful, uh, not explicitly as homophobic, but she's opposed to this wonderful progressive relationship, so she's got to be a terrible bigot, right? The Just take a moment and consider Sam's mum's point of view, what she's aware of. What's her experience of this whole thing? Well, she is a single mother with a lot on her plate. Her daughter pairs up with an aggressive kid from a broken home whose dad is an alcoholic. This girlfriend is in a rotten school and hangs out with drug dealers. And oh yeah, Dina also gets her daughter hospitalised. Now add to that that Dina just got her daughter mixed up in a multiple fatality incident involving said drug dealers. So put yourself in her shoes. If you were Sam's mother, would you be encouraging this relationship? No. Heck no. Sam's mom has got it going on. Morally speaking. Sam's mum did absolutely nothing wrong. Now the fandom obviously loved the Dina Sam pairing. It, it is it is good casting, it's good chemistry, it is central to the trilogy. And from what I saw in the comments, they seem to swallow the logic that Sam is at fault and should apologize. Just know from what you've seen in this video, you know that isn't true. I know there's a whole progressive paint job that has been applied to this scenario, but just look past the identities and don't let that bamboozle your moral compass, okay? This is something that stood out to me in my first watch. I was super aware of this mid-film. It really was a sort of glaring problem for me. And once you see that Dina is a jerk and not Sam, you notice another moral blind spot that the Fear Street series has. It is seriously against people trying to better themselves, especially if they're leaving toxic people and situations. So as you've seen, Dina has this fatalist attitude. Uh, Sam also ends up agreeing with it. And also in the second part, in Fear Street 1978, Alice, who is doing lots of drugs, having risky sex in fairly public places, she blames Cindy for dropping that wild lifestyle. See, Cindy's decided to be responsible, sort of clean her act up and get away from bad influences, and her life is surprisingly improving as a result. So obviously Alice and Ziggy blame her for this, and Cindy ends up apologizing. I told myself if I was perfect, if I did everything right, I could beat it. I snitched on you, I got new friends, I... Now I know she was right. That is messed up. That is a seriously messed up moral message. Now that all happens because the main moral viewpoint of Fear Street is systemic. There is Sunnyvale, which is privileged, and Shadyside, which is oppressed systemically. These are probably terms you are now regrettably overly familiar with. And while Fear Street does acknowledge that self-improvement works, it's going to blame you if you choose to do it, if you choose to improve your life. Because from their point of view, if your life is awful in Shadyside, it's due to this abstract force that is oppressing you. But this causes huge dissonance for me and for viewers who aren't committed to that ideological lens. Shit is due. It doesn't have to be. I didn't no, actually please mean. stop making excuses. You are total chaos. Because while we're told that Shady Side is cursed, what we actually see watching the film is family breakdown, school violence, rampant drug dealing, lying to police, lazy, uncaring, openly corrupt state employees, promiscuity, theft, vandalism, introducing drugs to young children. In each bag, and if you finish in an hour, I'll let you watch my so-called life with me. So all of these problems that we've seen, these are individual choices. They are ethical failures of individuals. And for the film to show us all of that and then say, oh yeah, the problem with shady side is this satanic curse. That, that's the problem, officer. It is jarring, it causes dissonance, and it 
it could even be sort of a low-key parody of the systemic moral viewpoint. It's, it's very weird and very jarring for me. Now, you can absolutely tell a film that has that viewpoint and carries that message, but Fear Street shows us one cause consistently and then blames another, and that is really weird. It's, um, it's a weird error in an otherwise really great horror series that I still would absolutely recommend. Now, apparently the director, Lee Janiak, has said that she's really interested in making more Fear Street movies, which I think is fantastic. I would really welcome that. However, uh, before she writes anything else, I, I really think she needs to do some reading. Please. Please do some reading. Okay, that that is enough soapboxing for me. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it interesting. And uh, I'd like to think I've convinced a fair few of you who maybe enjoyed Fear Street, but did feel there was something off there. You know, I don't think I'm going to be alone in noticing that. Um, but beyond Fear Street, the next live stream is going to be on Tuesday. Um, so do drop by and enjoy that. That is Tuesday at 8 p.m. British time. And uh, we're also really close to the 1000 subscriber mark. That is something I've been working on for quite a while. So I'd really appreciate it if you'd help me get over there by subscribing if you're not subscribed or sharing these videos with a friend, someone who you think might be interested. I know that the majority of people watching these videos are return viewers, they are repeat viewers, so thank you, I really appreciate it. Um, but also most of you aren't subscribed, so uh, it would really help me out. Uh, and hey, you're already here, it's just one click for you. If you uh, subscribe today, I'd really appreciate it. All right, that's a uh, it's enough standard YouTube stuff. I'm, I'm not good at it. I, I, I just do the overthinking and the reaching and the weird popcorn props that I can't do the promotion. I, I'm not that crime guy. I really wish I had him for this. Anyway, hopefully see you on the live stream on Tuesday. Thanks y'all. Cheers.